I want you to, for the leaders who are still thinking about, maybe I need an assistant, maybe not. I'm not sure. Uh, Every leader needs an assistant. Let's talk about this. I agree. Uh, Every leader. It can feel like it's not worth the investment of money. It can feel bougie. It can feel like, well, I don't really just need a secretary. Uh, it can also feel like I'm not sure I can. I mean, we've, we've hit on all these objections of why you wouldn't have an assistant. But in the opening part of the conversation, you said that your assistant 10x is your capacity. And I think when a leader really understands their role and their ability to build and grow a peak performing business, if the biggest asset of a leader is their time, then any time spent doing something that someone else can do, they're actually stealing from the opportunity of the organization. They're stealing from their team. Break this down for leaders who are going, okay, I'm hearing this. I think I probably need to get an assistant, but I'm, I'm still just, I need to be convinced this is the wise thing to do. Yeah, so I um, I had my first assistant when I was a director and she worked for me for 10 hours a week. And my boss, Brian Miles, the owner of Belay, insisted that I have an assistant. Same thing, I was like, oh, I think I'm good. I think I can do all the things. Um, he says, no, I want you to have this because I'm gonna need you to continually do more hmm. and grow. And I can't keep giving you more and you won't grow if you don't let go. And that honestly is the truth for every leader. So I probably had an assistant long before the average person might have an assistant. I was not an executive by any means. Um, I was kind of down in rank in the organization. And um, honestly, it was the biggest gift. I mean, I learned really early on the value of my time and that really my job was, no matter what seat you sit in an organization, whether you're at the top, middle management or or anywhere else, Mm. that the job if you're working through a thriving, growing organization, what you need to do tomorrow should be greater than what you're doing today. Mm. And you're not going to be able to do more, take on more, look ahead and figure that out if you don't have more capacity. Yeah. So making sure that you are available and free to professionally develop and take on additional, even if it's it's not something physically you're doing, but it's your thinking, your brain, your mm-hmm. mind, your time that you're processing or brainstorming or um, working through hard decisions for organizations, for your organization, whether it's, um, you know, product line issues or client issues or new ser- new services or sales strategies, um, whatever those things are, there there is, if you expect your company to grow and you want to grow with it, you have got to be available to be better tomorrow than you are today. Yeah. You're not going to be better tomorrow than you are today if you are bogged down scheduling right. calendar and booking travel and taking care of email and worrying about social media posts and whatever that is. You you really want to free yourself yes. up before that all is going to come to you. So it was always my job is always to figure out how to delegate more so that I had more capacity so that my leader could give me Mm -hmm. more. And so the more free and available my time was, the more my leader delegated to me. And then I was Ah, able to kind of rise through the organization. So how I, how I went from in at Belay starting at the bottom and now sitting as CEO is because I really made sure that I was open, free, and available to do the bigger things mm. by delegating the smaller things. I love it. Well, it sounds like you're saying you have to have the time available to step into the next opportunity, even before you're clear on exactly what the next opportunity is. And uh, yes. as business owners, you know, if we're, if we're growing our business, healthy things grow, growing things change, there's going to be more opportunity that you as the leader need to come attack the new opportunity with all that you've got and all your mental horsepower and all your ingenuity. But if you're bogged down with everything, that opportunity comes and you go, I don't have the capacity to go see that opportunity it'll pass you by and uh yeah because then you get stuck in the oh god you know you you mm. find yourself if you're already overwhelmed and your plate's already full and some great opportunity has just fallen in your lap you know your first reaction might be oh gosh how am i gonna do this right. i don't have the time right versus being wow this is awesome i'm gonna charge at mm. this because you actually feel free and unburdened yes to do those things yeah I love it. Trisha, um, 
there can be a stigma about what an assistant is. And uh, I've talked to certain people who are like, yeah, I don't, I don't need a secretary. You know, you got kind of, if you think of uh, Mad Men and the, you know, the right. classic 1960s, they bring your coffee and they file things and they take your calls and leave you notes of who called when. And, oh, welcome back from lunch, sir. And it's just very white, mm-hmm. male, old school. <laughs> sec- that's not what we're talking about. We're, we're talking about somebody yes. who is your business partner, team member, somebody that's really in it with you. But what are the tasks and activities and, and projects that a really great assistant does that's way beyond going and, and getting coffee. I mean, because we're, we're, I mean, they may be doing some of those things occasionally, but that's not the job description that we're talking about. No, not at all. And if you're me and we work remote, she can't bring me coffee. So. <laughs> she can order I mean, it to be delivered. To maybe. My ha- she could, she yeah. could totally order coffee delivery, but that's not on the priority list. Yeah. So I think, I think it's exactly your point is that this, this person has to be such a trusted partner for you because you really want them. It's, it's like you said, Daniel, you want them to be able to intimately know you and what you need at every layer through every mood. There will be so much personal investment that goes into this relationship and they will know you personally. Mm. I mean, a lot of what my assistant does for me is personal family vacation planning, scheduling doctor's appointments, dentist appointments. I mean, there are things that she does for me as a whole person, not just as work, Trisha. Um, You know, we aren't always just our work selves. Mm. We are whole people. And so really the, um, you know, my assistant knows so much about me more than anybody else that honestly I work for because she is supporting a person and it's not just about the work that she does. Now, as far as the work that she does, it's constantly evolving, um, like I've kind of said, but there are the basics that, you know, support any leader. Thing, you know, the calendar management, she helps me with some of my, triaging some of my email and booking my travel. Um, a lot of meeting logistics planning, like, you know, yeah. Zoom links and location booking and having lunch brought in and all of those things for sure. Um, but it's a lot of the miscellaneous one-offs that happen in any given week, like, oh, this opportunity came up and now you're going to be at this event. And her being able to, instead of me worrying about how am I gonna be at this event? I have these other things planned. I mean, she is just gonna swoop in, mm. make it happen. Again, being being that she's giving me peace of mind, make it happen, adjust schedules and, and be the eyes and the ears that I, I actually don't wanna be. Like, I don't wanna stress out about what my calendar looks like and that these two meetings are overlapping with each other and people are requesting yeah. my time that I don't have. And um, she really can set priorities for me um, and guide my, my time for me. And then I'm able to leverage her in so many miscellaneous ways, um, you know, one thing, right, I've mentioned a couple of times is, you know, she helps a lot with my social media and LinkedIn connections mm-hmm. and um, board meeting prep and notes and follow ups. I, you know, the, the latest thing I've have her working on for me, which has been such a tremendous help is, you know, she's my follow upper. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> go I will chase step them out down. Of a meeting. Yes. yes, I'll step out of a meeting and there's a list of like 14 things that somebody is going to do and usually it's not me right, yeah, right. So somebody on the team is going to go do these this thing and this person's going to do this thing and so it is it is awesome mm. to say to my assistant here's the 14 action items that came out of this meeting um and who they're assigned to let me know when they're all done yeah <laughs> right so um now she's helping me inspect what i expect that's which great is, we've gotten to the place and that's a gift that's- 